morning. There we go. Good morning and welcome to worship here at United Lutheran Church. Uh, we're glad that you are joining us in worship today. Welcome those who are, who are present in our sanctuary this morning, those who join us through our radio broadcast ministry each week, and those who are joining us through Facebook Live. And so we gather all in our various ways to come and worship uh, the living God. A few announcements before we begin our worship service today. If you look to pages uh, 6 and 7, and actually 8, uh, a few things I'd like to highlight for you. Uh, we are still doing our summer lunches for just two more days on Monday and Tuesday, and if you'd like to volunteer and help out with those, uh, you would be most welcome to join. We're serving in our courtyard, and we've had really tremendous response from so many people. Uh, and so I thank all those who have been come out to help and serve and, and be a part of this ministry of, of feeding people in our, our neighborhood and our community. Also, a, a thank you to the people at uh, St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church who have sent volunteers and also donated to uh, help with our feeding project. And also, uh, I think this coming week, the folks from St. Paul's Episcopal Church are going to be helping to volunteer as well. So it's truly a, a, a community and um, neighborhood uh, church project in so many ways. So, so we say thank you. When I speak about volunteers, we also have United in Serving, and we have our quarterly groups. And uh, the, this quarterly group, we're encouraging those people who have, you know who you are. You've got a letter or you've got an email or something. So it's time for you to sign up uh, and to make us feel more at ease that we know that we have things covered for Sunday mornings. On the back page of your bulletin, there's some things to look ahead for, and they're all coming up rather quickly. We have uh, our party on the blacktop coming up on September 7th from 5 to 7. It's been a, an event here at United for, for uh, uh, and quite a number of years, and it's a tremendous time for our neighborhood and for our community to gather and to celebrate. Uh, we have musicians, we have meals, we have bouncy toys. Now, I'm not into the bouncy toys, but I know there are some people that really are. Uh, September 11th is our kickoff Sunday. Sunday school resumes and uh, our, we have our education hour and worship and our usual schedule. Wednesday, September 14th is Wednesday start up with faith friends and confirmation and all those things get going again. As well as for the middle schoolers, there's a castaway retreat also coming up in September. So things to look forward to in our calendar. We gather each week under our theme, Who is My Neighbor? And we've been learning through the Gospel of Luke about who our neighbor is and how we serve our neighbor. And, uh, and as we experience that in our own community, we hear about that from the scriptures today. And so I invite you now as we prepare for worship to turn in your bulletins to our order for confession and forgiveness. And would you please stand as you are able? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat to the table. When, when met, met by, by those in need, need we have too often passed by on the other, other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love, to love our, our neighbors. neighbors. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 858, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you and let us join together in our prayer of the day oh God, oh God mighty, mighty and immortal, immortal you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers we cannot, we cannot by ourselves stand upright give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin we may, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I 
The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 9b through 14. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 8, and we'll receive we will read responsibly. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. 
The second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose word made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure that the order was given. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that is what is not shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. synagogues on the Sabbath. Just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Over the past two weeks, United Lutheran Church has been serving lunch to our neighbors. It is a free, on-the-house, no-questions-asked, all 
our welcome lunch. Every weekday, we have served between 80 to 220 people, either on our front lawn or in our fellowship hall. As our guests gather, they are enjoying good tasting, nourishing meals. They're playing games. They're talking and laughing with one another. And to make all of this happen, United Volunteers have offered hundreds of hours of volunteer service and given thousands of dollars. Our seniors are working side by side with our youth. It is a beautiful, incredible outpouring of love and service given in Jesus' name. And along the way, we've been listening, listening to the stories of those who come for lunches, a family new to our community and neighborhood who are looking for community and connection, a father from another nation here to take part in a medical trial for their young child, a weary mom thankful for a place to come with her young children, a family waiting for transitional housing to become available. Each person has a story. Last week, I was hustling upstairs to get something that was needed. I can't remember what it was any longer, but it was important at the time. And as I was on my way, I ran right by a group of three people in the hallway. Honestly, I was so focused on my task that I hardly noticed them. But one of the people in that group stopped, and they turned around, and they stopped me. And they asked me if I was a part of the church that was serving the lunches. Yes, I introduced myself. I'm one of the pastors, Pastor Carla. He continued, well, I just wanted, I just needed to say thank you to all of you for doing this. It's been more helpful than you'll know, and it's been such a great place to be. I'm so glad that you found it helpful, I said. We all want to make sure that each one of our neighbors has something good to eat this month and to bring people together in community and in these sometimes difficult times to provide at least a moment of respite from all of the worry. And a woman, the woman who was part of this group of three, she smiled and she shook her head in affirmation and she said to me, you all are doing all of that and more. You are lifting people up. You're lifting people up. In her brief comment, I think that neighbor of ours gave us a pretty great summary of what it is that we're to be about as followers of Jesus. After all, in this morning's gospel reading, we meet Jesus who is literally lifting someone up. From the very beginning of his public ministry, Jesus was clear that he would be about lifting people up and into the grace, the healing, the liberation of God's kingdom. In his very first sermon, a sermon that took place also in the synagogue, Jesus, relying on the prophet Isaiah, states his mission. Jesus said, The Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and to let the oppressed go free. In today's gospel encounter with a woman who is bent over and unable to stand, Jesus is living out this mission. We don't know much about this woman except that she was present in a synagogue that day as Jesus was teaching. We learn that she'd been bent over by a spirit for 18 long years forced to look at the ground as she went through her life. Did people stare at her? Or did people look away, not wanting to see her challenges, her suffering? I don't know. But what we do know is this, Jesus saw her. Jesus really saw her. Throughout the Gospels again and again, Jesus notices and cherishes what other people overlook. He notices the small and the insignificant from the lilies of the field to the small child in his arms. And Jesus seeing her, he called to her, and he raised her up by laying hands on her. 
She straightens up and he calls her a daughter of Abraham. Had she forgotten through all of this who she was? And I wonder, I wonder what that was like for her, having not looked at anyone directly for years, now face to face with Jesus. What was that like for her to be restored to her health and community? However it was, she responds by praising God. And when I read our psalm for this morning, I wondered if this psalm was her song of praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, and who heals all your diseases. Now it should come as no surprise to us that the leader of the synagogue is not singing Jesus' praises that day. In fact, rarely do the religious leaders embrace any of Jesus' actions with enthusiasm. The complaint this time is that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath. And I think, isn't that so often the complaint that those who are in power make against those who are trying to stir things up and create something new? You know, they just didn't go about it in the right way. I don't appreciate their tactics. But Jesus, Jesus knows how to hold his own with these guys. He sees them too and he engages their complaint. Even though they weren't even speaking directly to Jesus, they were just talking about him to others. And I think for you and I, it could be easy to dismiss this leader of the synagogue. But I think it's more worthwhile for us to try and understand his perspective. The leader of the synagogue knew that the command to Sabbath is meant to be a gift from God for God's people. A gift of rest and renewal, a gift of prayer and worship. Sabbath keeping was one of the ways that Jews kept their identity even over long centuries in exile living as strangers in a strange land. In the book of Deuteronomy, Sabbath is explained in this way. There, God's people are told to keep the Sabbath as a way of remembering their freedom. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, the land the Lord God brought you out of from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Once they had been slaves in Egypt, working, toiling, all, every day of the week, but now, now they are set free. Sabbath has always been about God's liberating ways. It is gift. It is grace. It is the good news that God is God and we are not. The world does not depend on our busyness. We can rest in God's love and providing, and this is healing. Notice that Jesus isn't throwing out the command to keep Sabbath here. Instead, he's expanding it. Sabbath time is time to enter into God's liberating presence. Healing this woman on the Sabbath is enacting God's liberation for all people. And I also hear in Jesus' challenge to the leader of the synagogue a challenge for us today. A challenge to consider if our long-standing, cherished traditions and practices are serving God's healing and liberating work or getting in the way of speaking God's grace and freedom for all. Jesus sees this woman and he calls her by name. And Jesus sees us as well. Jesus sees you. Jesus knows what weighs you down, the burdens you are carrying, the thing that has you so bent over that it makes it hard for you to stand up and look someone else in the eyes. In Jesus, God took on human flesh and came among us as one of us so that we would know that our real, in-the-flesh lives 
they mattered to God. Jesus died and rose to free us from everything that would keep us bowed down, feeling shame, and living disconnected from the people and world around us. Jesus sees us. And Jesus, who sees us, calls us to see, to really see one another. And I think that it's only as we live and spend time in God's gaze of love and mercy, seeing ourselves as God sees us, that we find the power and the courage to really see, really see those who are around us. And I know that can be hard. It's really hard because if I see the suffering of someone else, it might require something more of me. If I have a conversation with the person across the table from me at the summer lunches, and she shares with me her story, it might add to the burden I feel or somehow disturb my understanding of the circumstances that leave people in poverty. Or if I see the child in the classroom, whether it's a classroom at school or a classroom here at church, if I see them as more than their behavior, then I might have to also look at the trauma that is behind their behavior. And if I see, really see the whole of our history, then I might also have to take into account how systems of injustice and a history of racism have left a trail of destruction from the mass graves of indigenous children to present day divisions and injustices. It is hard, but, but Jesus calls us to see because this seeing is the beginning of the healing Jesus offers. God's healing is unleashed in this world when we dare to look at one another, to look into one another's eyes and see that we are all, all of us, made in the image of God. We're nearing the end of summer, and I don't know just how this summer was for you. If it's been filled with joyful and renewing experiences for you, or if it's turned out to be something much less than you had hoped. Maybe it's a mix of both. I don't know if you're feeling full of energy for the fall or feeling bent over by the responsibilities or challenges that you're facing. But whatever it is for you, I hope that in our worship today, in this Sabbath time, this Sabbath gift, you will know that Jesus looks at you, that Jesus sees you, looks at you with love, yearns to raise you up from everything that has you bowed down, and promises, promises you that there is no spirit that has more power than his loving spirit of new life. After all, we worship on Sunday, and our Sabbath is the day of resurrection. On this Sabbath day, once again, we are invited to a meal. It's free, on the house, it's the table of Jesus. And here everyone is fed and everyone receives an equal amount. And in this meal, there is healing. Jesus sees you as you are, both beloved and bowed down by so many spirits that curve us away from God and from one another. But here, at Jesus' table, we are lifted up to see and know ourselves as beloved children of God. And here, at the table, we are nourished and strengthened to rise from his table of grace and to take our part in lifting up all of humankind to know and to experience God's liberation and healing. Amen.
confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Gracious God, you crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts and service to the whole people of God. May we be instruments of your love for our neighbor every day. God of grace, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. And so we ask that you would inspire rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers and all those who would love your will to restore places afflicted by violence and poverty and inequality. God of grace, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Especially, we pray this day for Mae Gordon, for Bill Lund, Carol Malm, Ren Kinseth, and Nicolette Carvey. God of grace, your word is a lamp unto our feet as we grow in faith by listening to that word. And so this week, we pray this week for our students and teachers and staff heading back to school, and in the coming weeks, that you would bless their time of learning. Keep our schools safe from violence and care for those students in greatest need. God of grace. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. God of grace, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And please share a sign of peace with those around you. You may be seated. At this time, we will receive our offer.
rise as we join in singing our offering song. bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting upon this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity and love and service to all our neighbors. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave. By his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one at the table of the Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us share in this meal. I would invite you now to take out your chalices that you received at the door, and if you did not receive, uh, one of the ushers could bring those if you hold up your hands. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you, and with all our hearts, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, grace to miss something big for something good, and the grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth, and too small for anything but love. May the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. We close our worship this morning with hymn number 796. Thank you. Oh.